Good morning, my dear children. Today, let's learn a new chapter. And the name of the chapter is The Interrelationships Between Living Things. Now, I have a riddle for you. Tell me, who am I? An age-old tree with a thick, strong trunk gives deep, dark shade from the scorching sun. Like an old man's beard with many strands, it has ropes for swinging from every branch. Yes, my dear children, looking at this image, it is clear that this tree is none other than the banyan tree. Very good. This tree is useful for all living things. These are the uses of the banyan tree. It gives shade to people, shelter to birds and animals. The children use the roots to swing. They also use its shade to study. And bees make their honeycomb. Now let's learn about plants. Plants in our surroundings are useful to us in different ways. For what purpose do we use their leaves? Beetle wine, also called as pan, is used as mouth freshener. Flame of the forest, palas, is used to cure digestion problem. Third, curry leaves is used in cooking. It is also called as kari patta. Fourth, wasaka, also called as adulsa, this is used to cure cold and cough. And fenugreek, also called as methi, is used to prepare vegetable. Now, the needs of living things are met in their environment. This is a chart which tells us about our requirements and everything which we require we get it from our nature. But there are differences in the needs of each kind of living things. An elephant require huge quantity of water but a mouse doesn't require the same quantity. A butterfly feeds on the nectar of the flower. Can a frog also feed on the same? No. A sheep eats grass. Can a tiger eat grass? A fish live in water. Can a pigeon survive in water? The aquatic plants grow in the water. Can a lemon tree grow in water? A fish can only survive in water. If I remove the fish out, can it survive on land or without water? There is an activity which you can observe and do it at home. So, my dear children, any type of living thing will be found only where all its needs are fulfilled. Let me introduce to you our special guest for today. My dear children, look who's here. My friend, Mr. Tiger. He's upset because he's missing his home jungle. As his basic necessities are not fulfilled in the city. So, let's learn what are the necessities of our friend. Mr. Tiger. As he got angry, I dropped him back home to the jungle. Now, my dear children, a tiger inhabits a place only where his requirements are fulfilled. So, let's check the basic necessities of a tiger. First, a tiger has strips on his body. This helps him to catch his prey like deer, bison and nilgai. 
he requires a water hole which never dries up especially in summer his shelter is cave so he searches a grassland and a place in hills and mountains next we keep animals in order to satisfy some of our needs they become dear to us we look after them well we feed them we take them to a vet if they fall ill these animals too return our affection we get several other things from animals in return my dear children you can have a look on the pictures do you know even the excreta of domestic animals is useful to us the dung of cattle is made into dung cakes they are combustible that is they can be burnt they are used as fuel in some places especially in village when they burn they give out smoke cattle dung is also used for plastering walls and floors of mud houses farmers use manures made from cattle dung and sheep pellets as fertilizers to grow crops plants are very useful to all human beings as well as animals we get fruits and vegetables from plants human beings grow plants to satisfy their need we get cotton from the cotton plant a seed is sown under the soil a seedling grows from the seed and the seedling grows into a beautiful plant we should grow more plants to make our nature more beautiful now my dear children other living things also get their basic necessities from the environment for example a chameleon eats insect a snake eats mice a tiger eats deer and a goat eats grass animals like monkeys and squirrels live in trees these animals are called as arboreal animals the word arboreal is derived from a latin word arbor which means trees animals which live in tree are safe due to the height of the tree they also get fruit which is provided by the tree these animals eat the fruit and drop the seed in the soil the seed germinates and this is how a forest is formed birds also use the trees they make their nest on the tree do you know when a buffalo is grazing in a grassy area you are very likely to see an egret riding on its back what could be the reason for that a certain kind of egret feeds on different kinds of insects grass is full of all kinds of insects but because they are hidden in the grass the egret cannot see them and catch them as the buffalo treads on the grass it frightens the insects which fly out of the grass the egret on the buffalo's back makes no mistake in swooping down to catch and eat them up now my dear children in the first poem rain in the night i explained you about the five seasons in this chapter we will only focus on the main three seasons that is 
summer, rainy and winter season. Summer season. It is very hot in summer. We wear cotton clothes and drink plenty of water. Rainy season. We use umbrellas or different kinds of raincoats and hoods to avoid getting wet in the rain. And winter season. During winter season, we wear woolen and other warm clothes to protect ourselves from the cold. Just as the three seasons affect us, they affect all other living things too. We see these changes taking place in the living world every year after year. Winter in Maharashtra is also called as the season of Pangal, that is the falling of leaves. That is because many trees shed their leaves in winter. The coats of many furry animals become thicker in winter. This keeps them warm in the cold season. Such growth of hair is especially noticeable in animals like sheep and some types of goats and rabbits. The end of winter is also the time for the mango trees to start blossoming. These blossoms are called mohur in Marathi. At the close of the month of February, it becomes warmer and by March, we begin to feel the heat. It's time for summer. In the summer season, many trees get new leaves. Forests appear to have taken on a copper color because these leaves are reddish and shiny while they are tender. Their color changes to green as the leaves grow bigger. The call of the coil is heard in many places. In summer, the market is full of mangoes and watermelon for us to buy. We all love mangoes. This is the season for these fruits. Although mango trees grow all over Maharashtra, the Konkan region is particularly famous for its mangoes. It is also the season for cashew nuts. The red yellow cashew apples can be seen growing on the cashew trees on the hillsides in the Konkan region. See the beautiful mangoes and the cashew fruit. In June, black clouds make their appearance and we know that it is rainy season. By this time, we begin to get jackfruits, jamun and karvandas. The seeds of grass and other plants lie scattered all over the ground. They sprout and start growing as soon as it begins to rain. It becomes green everywhere. This greenery is soothing after the hot summer months. Sometimes we can even see the rainbow with its seven colors in the sky. As it becomes wet everywhere, frogs appear. We also hear the loud noise of frog croaking all together. As the rainy season ends, it is time for winter to make a comeback. It gets colder and colder. It is not good for the frogs. They go deep under the ground for a long period of slumber which lasts for 7 or 8 months. We depend on agriculture for food. The different seasons, summer, monsoon and winter, are the time for doing different tasks in the field. The environment changes with the seasons. Living things have to adapt themselves to those changes. I hope my dear children, you have understood this lesson. Thank you.